Today we're gonna talk about how I fell for a scam, why it's worth it to buy the best brakes in the world, and why a complete stranger decided to dig me out of a very deep hole. Getting scammed sucks, and it's because you got tricked. If you had been smarter or more cautious or a little less greedy, maybe you wouldn't have fallen for the scam in the first place. Not only do you lose your money, but you get embarrassed in the process. But even though it's embarrassing, on this channel I try to show all of my mistakes, and that's because I think that failing is a part of learning, especially when you're new at something. I'm a beginner DIY mechanic, and my goal is to turn my 2007 Corvette Z06 into a car that can beat Porsche 911 GT3s out on the racetrack. One of the very first mistakes I made on this project was when I decided to spend almost $4,000 on a used AP Racing Big Brake Kit that I found for sale on the internet. Needless to say, when I got the kit, it was not the genuine article. I've already made a couple of videos explaining what I bought and what went wrong when I tried to install it. I'll put a link to those in the description and at the end of this video. But long story short, I tried very hard to get that kit to work and I just couldn't do it and eventually I gave up. And probably the smartest thing I did was to realize that I was in over my head. So I decided to ask for help and I sent an email to Essex, which is the company that distributes AP Racing parts in North America. Thankfully, my email made its way to Jeff Ritter, who manages the high performance division at Essex. Turns out that Jeff is a fellow enthusiast, and not only did he read my email, but he watched the video. And it turns out that this is not the first scam that he's seen. In fact, people contact them on almost a weekly basis about this kind of issue. And I think Jeff saw an opportunity not only to help me, but also to educate all of us and hopefully maybe help one of you not fall into the same trap that I did. So he asked me to pack up the entire kit and ship it to him at Essex in North Carolina so he and his team could take a look at all the parts that I bought and see what was what. Okay, now we're gonna take a look at what Josh actually got versus what he thought he was gonna get. So first up are calipers. So calipers form the core of the kit. And in this case, we found out that he actually did get authentic AP Racing Pro 5000 R radicals. Uh, we've seen a lot of counterfeits on the market, but in this case, they were authentic. How do we know that? Uh, on every AP Racing caliper, near the inlet port is a serial number. So every caliper has a unique serial number. So the calipers came to us in really good condition actually. They look like they haven't really had much hard use at all. Uh, this one had a tiny bit of wear on the logo, but other than that, they look pretty fresh. That said, we won't always want to err on the side of caution since we don't know, you know where exactly these came from, who was using them, how they were being used. So what we did was we had the caliper seals replaced. So our technicians uh, rebuild thousands of calipers every year for all the, not only HPD customers, time trial customers, also NASCAR Cup teams, IMSA teams. So they're constantly rebuilding calipers. The same guys that do those calipers will do your calipers if you use our uh, caliper recertification rebuilding program. Uh, so what we do is we remove all of the pistons and we put in fresh seals. Over time, when you're running them really hot on the racetrack, you're heat cycling them, they can become brittle and sometimes they'll start to leak. It's just a wear and tear item. They typically last a really long time and we don't have to do this that often, but it is a service we offer for anyone who purchases one of our Essex, uh, AP Racing by Essex brake kits. Okay, next we're gonna take a look at the discs and here's where things go a little bit wobbly, uh, both literally and metaphorically. So we'll first look at the disc hat, and then we will look at the iron itself. So going to the disc hat, as you can see on this disc, it has a race form motorsport logo on it. Uh, that's where this was originally sourced from. And Josh did a little digging on that and found that race form motorsport is no longer in business. Uh, and we see this sort of thing happen all the time. 
people get their hands on AP Racing components, uh, they'll build a kit, their version of a kit, put it out into the market, and then leave their customer stranded with no support, no spares of any type. So uh, that's what happened in this case. If you take a look at one of our Essex uh, disc hats, you can see, first of all, we laser etch our logo on them. We also have our part numbers here. On the back side of the hat, you'll notice that we have these scallops cut out. That's to allow for air to flow across the outer disc face when it's mounted up. So the air comes in the back side of the disc and out over the outer face. Uh, these are all made from 6061 heat treated aluminum that we source locally. So we know the quality of it and they all receive a hard anodized coating. Uh, we have seen that our coating tends to be the most durable out of anything on the market. The one thing you'll also know with this when you get it is that it is made precisely to spec. Every single disc hat we get is placed on a coordinate measuring machine during the quality control process. And so what that does, it measures a bunch of points on this part to ensure that it was made, that it's true, that it's completely flat when it's sitting down because disc hats are notoriously difficult to manufacture. Uh, what happens is when you manufacture them, a lot of times they have a, uh, they're a little concave or have a little bevel to them and then what happens is when you mount them up, guess what, and you spin them up to very fast revolutions, they wobble, they don't run true, the mounting binds whenever the, this, the uh, iron disc ring tries to expand. So. It's extremely important that these are made to precise specs. Okay, next up is the iron disc ring itself. These discs obviously look a little different than our AP Racing J hooks we typically use. AP produces thousands of different styles of discs, sizes of discs. Many times, however, we'll see people make a AP Racing brake kit or a Brembo brake kit and they will use discs from another source. They might be some off-brand that you've never heard of. Uh, they might not be any brand at all, um, and the quality of them is typically pretty suspect. If it is a, an authentic AP Racing iron disc ring, the part number will be stamped on the outer edge here, and that is the case with our Essex uh, variants as well. So this was actually an authentic AP Racing disc, um, some of the differences to what we supply, however, are one, it's in this case, it's the same. We have we do offer a kit in this size, but a lot of times we'll see that the sizing is not the same as what we supply because uh, we design the disc and then they manufacture it to our specification. And those are specifically for Essex and for our brake kits. Another thing you'll notice is again, the slot pattern is different. They're, this one's just using a, a slightly curved slot. All of our discs in our competition kits use the patented uh, J-hook. This gives you more even, even heat distribution. Uh, the pads uh, distribute more evenly around the face of the disc and you have less judder and vibration. So we always use a J-hook on our, on our competition kit. So if you don't see a J-hook, that's a first telltale sign that you may not be dealing with an authentic AP Racing by Essex kit. Uh, another big difference here is the number of veins. So you can see on this disc, this is a 48 vein disc. Uh, we don't use 48 veins for any of our front kit. We always use a high vein count, typically in the range of 72 to 84 veins. Uh, that does a few things. It flows a lot of air, and it also gives you an extremely stable disc face. So again, less prone to une uneven uh, pad deposits, vibration, judder. So you're, you're gonna get smoother brake application whenever you have this type of slot design. Looking a little more closely, the mounting mechanism on this one is different compared to what we typically use on our competition kits as well. So this is what you call a float in hat mechanism. So as this di disc heats up, it, this, this bobbin will slide in the channel on the aluminum hat. So the downside to this one is that that bobbin is sliding in an aluminum channel, which is a little more prone to wear and tear than the iron disc ring itself. So this little bobbin slides in the channel. So as the disc heats up, this is free to slide in and out. And 
puts the wear and tear on the iron disc ring itself rather than the aluminum hat. So we found this to be extremely stout. In the last decade, I can't I can't count I can count on one hand how many times we've had someone replace a disc hat. Uh, and it's not for wear. It's always just because they've crashed a car or had some kind of damage to it. Um, so they just don't really wear out when you use this type of mechanism with our hats. Okay, last and certainly not least are these beauties. The caliper adapter bracket that Josh got with his kit. And these things are rough. These are actually kind of terrifying when you look at them. And we see this sort of thing all the time. Sometimes we even see people fabricate stuff out of angle iron and try to mount it on the car. It's, it's pretty, pretty frightening when you consider what a car is going through as it's hurtling towards a wall at 150 miles an hour and the stresses that places on the brake system. At any rate, so we don't really know what this is. Obviously it's aluminum, but we don't know the quality of the aluminum. Uh, we don't know how qualified the person was who designed this. We don't know what tools they used to design it, whether they used a, a ruler and a pencil. We don't know the quality of the hardware. We can see that they use bolts to thread into the aluminum rather than studs. Uh, that's a problem because then every time you thread this bolt into the softer aluminum, you run the risk of potentially stripping that out. So that's something we avoid by using studs. Um, so. Whenever you take a look at our components, our caliper adapter brackets versus their caliper adapter brackets, it's a pretty stark contrast. To start with, we have uh, engineers with a, a ton of experience designing brake systems. Um, they've designed them for professional race teams uh, all the way down to our current uh, high performance program. They use finite element analysis when designing the bracket. So what that is, is a way to model the bracket before we ever produce it and look at what is the best way to allocate mass, how do we shape it, how do we look for potential failure points uh, or any weaknesses in it. So we model all of that on the computer before we ever cut any metal, which is, which is of great value to us. We also use high quality 6061 uh, aluminum, heat treated and anodized, hard anodized again, just like our disc hats. So these hold up for many, many years, take a ton of abuse. We also use ARP studs, like I mentioned earlier. So rather than constantly having to thread a bolt into a relatively softer aluminum part, the stud stays in there and then you just slip your caliper over it and you snug down your jet nuts. These are aircraft grade nuts. We put a lot of time and energy into both the design and manufacturing of these. So you know they're gonna be of the highest quality they're going to last a long time, they're not going to deform, and you're going to be able to beat the heck out of them on the track without having to worry about them for many years to come. After he'd looked everything over, Jeff and I got onto a call to talk about what he'd found. All right, we're on a Zoom call here with Jeff Ritter from Essex. Hey, how you doing, Josh? I am the high performance division manager here at Essex, so my job is everything non-professional motorsports at Essex. So uh, working with people like yourself or in similar markets, uh, developing brake systems for them, helping them have a better time at the track is basically my objective. So, and you told me before we started recording, you guys have a pretty cool piece of machinery there at the office. Yeah, we got a GT4 RS sitting on our lift right now, and I'm hoping maybe later today I'll get to go out and play with it a little bit. We've got a really cool customer local to us who's helped us out on a few other Porsches. We're putting a kit on for him, basically. We don't normally do installs, but he hooked us up with borrowing the car and using it to take measurements off of test fitting all of our prototype parts. Uh, so in exchange for that, uh, we cut him a deal on the kit and we're putting it on for him. So he's going to come pick it up and uh, I don't know if he's going to the track this weekend, but he does go a lot. So he's going to be out tearing it up with our brakes uh, here within the next week or two, I think. What's the local track to you guys? We're just outside of Charlotte. I, I consider VIR kind of our home track. I, I think that some people watching might not be familiar with AP Racing or with Essex. Do you want to give us a little overview of the company? 
Yeah, so AP Racing is a major brake component manufacturer. They're in Coventry, England, and they've been in business for a very, very long time. Um, they've won over a thousand uh, Formula One races with their brake and clutch components. And through Essex, they're also the exclusive supplier for NASCAR Cup. So every uh, NASCAR Cup car has AP Racing brakes on it. Uh, we support IMSA, you know, all the way down to HBDE and time trials. So we're the exclusive importer and distributor for AP Racing in North America. We sell directly to enthusiasts, um, so people can call us up, ask questions, and if they feel comfortable making a purchase through us, that's great. Um, we have authorized resellers all over the country. Um, who are specialists a lot of times. You know, if someone uh, on the West Coast has a trusted shop uh, that they deal with all the time, chances are they, they, they're already signed up with us. With my C6 Z06, what are the benefits of an AP racing kit versus the factory brakes? Yeah, the C6 Z06 was an interesting case. Uh, I've owned a couple Corvettes myself that I've used as a track car. I tracked the C5 Z06 for a number of years. The C6 Z06 has the uh, PBR calipers on it, which were, um, they've, they've had their share of problems over the years. They have those little tiny padlets. They're like postage stamp size and they're super thin. Uh, they burn up almost instantly when you take them on the track. There's just no thermal mass there. Uh, the discs were moderately sized, but they weren't particularly effective. They didn't flow a lot of air. Um, they had directional vanes on them, but they actually had one disc on both sides of the car, so one spun backwards. Uh, the calipers had some pins that would fall out occasionally on people. And let's just say the C6 Z06 has been a very good platform for us, for people who need you know, really good brakes. So obviously you're, you're solving all of those problems, but say any, sports car, what's the benefit of going to a high-end big brake kit like yours? Yeah, you get a lot of benefits. A lot of times unsprung mass is a big deal. A lot of it just isn't designed for track use. It can't take the repeated beating at the crazy temperatures we see on a track. Uh, the materials aren't as good, so they aren't using stainless steel for pistons. Uh, the calipers aren't as optimized for weight. They aren't as stiff. The discs uh, typically a lot of times they don't have an aluminum hat they might be a one-piece disc or sort of a semi-floating disc so they don't expand and contract as cleanly they're more prone to cracking the metallurgy is not as good in them uh, the internal vein design, they don't flow as much air. There's just a long list of uh, the... The guy who says, well, I can lock up my brakes with the factory brakes, that's not the whole story at all. There's a lot more to it. The, a good example is like a C7 Z06 or the new C8 Z06. We just released our kit for that. You know, you have this gigantic carbon ceramic setup um, and, you know, you, you need big wheels to actually fit that thing in there. Uh, we can accomplish the same thing. We, we, our iron system is considerably smaller. It weighs the same or less than the carbon ceramic and it fits inside an 18 inch wheel. So it's just a win, win, win. You don't have to deal with all the nonsense of the carbon ceramic and the, you know, how delicate they are and how expensive they are. And, um, so it's just, it's optimization, efficiency, materials, all those sorts of things. I was on your website and I saw the, the C8 Z06 kit being talked about. And the pad, it looked like it was an inch thick. It's ridiculous. Yeah, so that's one of the cool things. And a lot of people who, on the enthusiast side, have never been around real race calipers. Um, so, yeah, like in some of the pro racing, we have up to 30 millimeter thick pads. And on our kits for Corvettes, Porsches, etc., we have uh, one inch thick 25 millimeter. So usually, I think on the C6 Z06, if I remember right, it's something like the little padlets are 14 millimeters thick. So it's a, it's a really big difference in terms of you put that pad set in there, you're going to get a lot more laps out of that before it burns up. You guys distribute and sell the parts. Is there an engineering side to the business as well? I think a lot of people think about us, they think AP is shipping parts in crates to us and then we just slap a label on them and send them out the door. That is totally not the situation. So AP relies on us to be the application experts in our particular market. So we're identifying potential vehicles that have, a, a, you know, have exhibited a need for a, a better brake system. Uh, then we bring that car in, we measure it, we get all of the data off the vehicle, then we 
decide what it needs and we use AP Racing brake calipers and iron disc rings but we design and manufacture everything else to actually get it on the car working properly in the way it needs to work. How frequently do you run into people who are kind of getting suckered by kits that aren't legitimate? Unfortunately, we do see a lot. It happens all the time where someone will come to us and say, I have this AP Racing brake kit. Um, it might have AP Racing, a AP Racing component or multiple AP Racing components, but it's not something we can help them with because we don't know anything about all the other components. So that's the one thing I kind of want to get across is a brake kit, I like to use the word system a lot because it is a system. All the components complement each other and work together. And if you have one piece of junk component, it can blow the whole thing up and it's not going to work well. So that's what we're trying to combat. And that's why when we sell a brake system, we sell it as a complete kit with all the components together as an Essex kit. So I'm not the first person who's come to you guys. I thought, oh, worst case scenario, I'll sort of buy off the shelf the, the components that I'm missing. And, and you clued me into the fact that we can't really support stuff that wasn't purchased from a legitimate you know, retailer, like an authorized reseller of these products. Like I said, if you have an amalgamation of parts from various sources, we don't know from a technical standpoint what to do with those or, or what we can suggest on how to fix your problem. It may be, you know, you have a vibration and it may turn out that the hardware you were supplied with is soft as butter and you know the the bracket stripped out and something's moving that's supposed to be secured um, we have no way to know that so we can't make a suggestion on how to fix it we can't tell you yeah you just need a new bolt because we don't we don't know anything about that situation so it could be any number of things but we, we just can't troubleshoot it our hands are tied um, so it makes it really hard for us yeah I received this kit that I bought on the Corvette forum and um, you know didn't do a lot of diligence bolted it on and it, it did go onto the car it's just that the the tires didn't you know rotate once it was on and then i even made an attempt to modify it a little bit to see if i could get it to work and then realized stop and, and that's when i reached out to you for help and you had me pack up all these parts and send them to you yeah your situation was a little unique it just struck me i saw the agony you were in on your video and i was like oh that poor guy and then the other side of it was, all right, this is a good opportunity for sort of a public service announcement to address this topic, specifically because it happens all the time. The common way this will go down is our, someone on our uh, client service team will get a call and the guy says, hey, I was on eBay, I got a great deal on a set of AP racing calipers. In his mind, he's thinking, all right, I have these calipers, maybe Essex will just sell me the brackets or maybe they'll just sell me the hats or this. So he starts to try to piece everything together. Everything from different places doesn't just bolt together like Legos. People come to us probably I'd say weekly with some kind of issue like this and then they'll try it out. It doesn't work well and then they just get frustrated and then they sell it to the next guy. So they'll put it back on eBay. And then, and then we, the phone rings again and it's the next guy and he says, hey, I got this great set of calipers and everyone on our team groans and they go, oh God, here we go again. I love your face in the video where you're sitting, you're, you're sitting in your garage and it looks like it's late at night and you're just like, and everyone who's ever worked on their car and prepped for a racetrack has been in that position and it sucks. So I was feeling very empathetic for you. Obviously a lot of it comes down to trying to save money. You want this like super premium part they're very expensive, you know, outside of a lot of people's budgets. What's your perspective on the value of these parts and how to think about it when you're, you know, thinking about buying it directly from you guys or from one of your authorized resellers versus going out on the internet looking for a deal? In the end, and I tell this to people, and I, I think you said it to me at one point, you said buy once, cry once, right? Just, and I say it to people, I say, do it once, do it right, and it's over. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have all the headaches associated with it. Now, if you buy something off of eBay and you run into a problem, you know, good luck. 
You know, that's the downside to it. Or you call us and our hands are tied and we can't help you because of all the reasons we talked about earlier. I'll tell you what, out of the many thousands of people I've helped over the years, People aren't coming back saying, I wish I hadn't spent that much. They say it was worth every penny or more. So, you know, we've, we've got a combination of a couple of components that are legit AP components, a couple of who knows where they came from. It doesn't really matter at this point. And, and we know that the, the, the situation typically is, sorry, like we can't help you. This is why you buy a kit from one of our resellers or from us directly. Are you going to be able to do anything to help me out? Yes, of course I am. Yeah. Okay. Like I said, um, I've been doing this stuff for 20 years and I always think of it, you know, I put myself on the other side, right? And I think I have had experiences bad of buying bad parts or things that didn't work well or failures and that sort of thing. So um, I can completely empathize. So what we're going to do, we took your calipers and we rebuilt them uh, with some fresh seals. Like you said, the discs uh, were legit AP racing, but not something we would specifically use on your application. Uh, and the disc hat has no resemblance to what we offer. So we're gonna have to get you set up with a proper um, disc of our design produced by AP with our disc hat and then also our calipers to mate to it. It's, it's a huge relief to know that I'm going to be using something that's legit and real and not this random thing that I bought off the internet. Yeah, it scares me as a fellow enthusiast, it scares me as someone in the business to see people get taken or, or be put in, in harm's way because of that sort of thing. So yeah, I'm sure when you put our kit on, it's gonna be a little different of an experience for you. What advice do you have for the enthusiasts out there? What, what should they keep in mind if they have one takeaway from this? So I think one of the, the biggest things to make sure you do is look at the support structure behind the product. You know, you buy parts from an unknown source or you buy it from somewhere that doesn't have that support structure in place. You're hanging on your own when you need spares or you have a problem. If you can't get one piece of this system, the whole thing is useless. If you can't buy the bolts to hold that disc to the hat, you can't run the car. It's done. It's a brick. So it's, it all kind of ties together, but the support structure is essential. The lesson that I've learned from this is it's important to know what you're buying, research the product. And I think so many of us in this day and age are great about like learning about the product. Watch YouTube videos, read forum posts, Facebook groups, whatever it is. The thing that people don't seem to talk about, and this is where it broke down for me, is who you buy the parts from is equally as important as the parts that you buy, if not more so. Looking back, I'm just like, <laughs> I would never do that again. It only takes getting bit once to learn, but I'm hopeful that there's gonna be somebody out there who watches this and learns enough from it that they avoid ever getting bitten in the first place. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, I actually have people on the forums who will private message me or they'll email to, into me and say, or into just someone on the team and they'll say, hey, there's a used brake kit on the forum for sale. Here's a link. Is this legit? And I've, I've said, yeah, that's one of our kits, you know, if I, if I can verify that. And that sort of thing happens all the time. So um, you got to be cautious, uh, but we are here to offer support. I mean, that's the, that's the big thing. So we're all enthusiasts. We're, we all own a bunch of cars and play with them just like, you know, all of our viewers and, and customers do. So, well, Jeff, once again, thank you so, so much, not only for helping me out of a jam, but also for being willing to educate everybody out there who's watching. We really appreciate it. Yeah, no worries. And uh, keep doing the videos. I was enjoying them. So I was watching them like, oh, this seems like, I, I think you're really relatable. Like you just seem like, like one of us, you know, and um, I, I have fun watching you. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing where you go with the car. And, and, and also looking forward to see how you like the brakes after you get out and pound on them a little bit. Absolutely, right on, thanks. Cool. A few days after the call, I came home and found a couple of big boxes sitting in my driveway. Mm -hmm. 
I am now the proud owner of an authentic AP Racing by Essex brake system for Goldie and I could not be happier. I think the time and effort that Essex put into this video says a lot about them as a company and I want to give another big thank you to Jeff and the team there. I hope you will come back for the next video because we're going to get these brakes installed and then we're going to take Goldie back to the track. See you next time.